Welcome back to our video guide setup uh, for Mac computers. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm gonna, actually going to be going over port forwarding, which is making your camera uh, able to be seen over uh, outside networks, um, which basically means you can see the camera from anywhere you are as long as you have an internet connection. Um, if you are, you know, if you go on vacation, if you're at work, if you want to check up on your phone, uh, on your on your camera through your phone. Um, with an app, you can actually put in uh, the information that I'll be going over in this video uh, to see the camera from wherever you are. Uh, if you're on a 3G network, 4G network, it uh, doesn't really matter. So this is usually the most important uh, step that a lot of people uh, need to set up with and also a lot the, the biggest step that a lot of people mess up on. Uh, so for Mac, we're going to go ahead and, and do this in, a, in an airport uh, express. Uh, but you might have a different router. Uh, so make sure you, you just... You can probably see the, the same concept and, and mimic it or duplicate it on your router. Um, but you can also check out our written guides on our support website uh, for further information on those routers and how to do port forwarding. Uh, so let's go uh, and, and get straight into it. What I'm going to do is go ahead and open up uh, IP camera tool, uh, which is in my downloads folder. And I do see the cameras here uh, from the last time we were Setting, setting up the, the wireless. Uh, it's at 10.0.1.4, which is what it was at before. So that's great. So uh, what we need to do right now is set a port for a ca for the camera. So in my first video, in the, in the basic initial uh, setup guide, I opened up network configuration over here, and I was talking about the HTTP port back then. And I left it at 80 for that video. But in this video, what we're going to need to do is set up uh, a different port other than 80 uh, in order to get the port forwarding uh, set up correctly because uh, usually devices set port 80 as their default port such as your router usually and so what happens is if you leave this port at 80 and you try to view your camera remotely after you go through the whole setup uh, that I'm about to go through um, you might actually pull up your router um, in that case sometimes you might not pull up anything at all and that's because the port actually is the same concept as the IP address. So like I said before, every every IP address on your local network uh, is different for your iPad, for your iPhone, for different Macs, um, for the camera. Uh, every device is going to have a different IP address. That same concept applies to uh, HTTP ports. So every device has to have its own uh, port. If you're trying to do port forwarding and you want to see it from an outside network, it's going to have to have its own specific port. So let's say you have five different cameras, right? Every camera is going to have to have its own local IP address uh, that is different from one another, and it's going to have to have a different port for each camera. So let's say you do, uh, for this video, we're going to do 8090 for this port, right? If I have a second, third, fourth, fifth camera, I want to assign a different port for each one. So usually the best way to do this is for the second camera, I would put 8091. For the third camera, I would put 8092. For the fourth one, I would put 8093, just like that. Um, sometimes people want to do different ports, and that's fine. You can do 7,000 if you want. You can do 6,000. doesn't really matter. Anything above 2,000, anything in the four digits is usually fine. There's no traffic on any of those ports. Uh, so for, for our sake and, you know, just, just because we just use 8090 because that's what we're comfortable with. We've just been using it for a long time. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and change it to 8090, but uh, at the same time, you can also do this within the camera itself if you don't uh, want to do it through IP camera tool or if you don't uh, have access to IP camera tool for some reason. You can always do it within the camera. You can go to device management, basic network settings, and you can change it here as well. So we can put an AD90 over here. We can submit this. And the camera is going to do its whole countdown, restart, reboot, dance kind of thing. So we're going to have to wait until uh, the camera reboots. Um, but basically, it's going to be uploading that setting, that, that new port, into uh, its, uh, its current settings, and it's going to reboot uh, into uh, that specific IP address and port combination. Uh, so you'll see when, when this countdown finishes, this page is not going to refresh because uh, the camera is actually operating at a different uh, IP address and port. So you'll see that it didn't go back to the basic network settings page but try to go to a different page. I'm not really getting anything. Um, and the reason this is happening is because if we go to IP camera tool again, we'll see that the IP address and the port changed. 
And actually, the, the whole URL has changed now, too. So we have the same IP address, but we have a colon here. And we have the port 8090. So you'll see in the, in the browser, I actually didn't have that. I have 10.0.1.4, which is what we were using before. How to change this is we just need to add what it did in IP uh, camera tool. So we put a colon, and then we put 8090. Okay? If I push enter, then I'm going to pull up the camera again, which is great. So we can log in again. We can type in admin with no password. Log in. I'm going to go to device management, basic network settings, and you'll see that 8090 was successfully updated in the camera, which is great. And we see that in IP camera tool. So that's done. We have a new IP, uh, the same IP address, but just with a new port. And uh, remember, if I if I wanted to use 80, I would try to access it, and you'll see the 80 actually disappears uh, because 80 is actually your default port, so it doesn't really show up. But if you use anything other than 80, if you use 8090, it's going to show up like that regardless. Just wanted to show you that really quick so people don't get uh, mixed up. So we have this uh, all ready to go. That's fine. So now what we have to do is we need to get into our router, and we have to change some settings. So. For this video, because we're doing it on Mac, I wanted to keep everything the same, so we're going to be using the Airport Express that I set up in the previous videos uh, to do port forwarding. So what we need to do is we need to go to Applications, and we need to scroll to Utilities, and we need to go to Airport Utility. And that's going to open up the Airport Utility, which basically shows uh, Airport Express type of uh, devices, such as routers that are connected, that you're connected to uh, to get to Internet. Uh, so we do see ours here, and the green light is on, meaning we have internet connection. Uh, so what we need to do is click on this, and you'll see all this information here, and we'll click on Edit. And when we click on Edit, what we have to do is go to the tab up here that says Network. And we click on that tab, and we see a whole bunch of different things. The most important thing that we need to check is Port Settings. And you'll see that nothing is actually entered in here, so we need to add a port forwarding settings so we can see the camera uh, from outside connections and the router will allow us will allow any uh, connection anyone who wants to see the camera such as us if we put in the external IP address of the camera and the port um, the the router will allow us to get into the router because your your routers are built in with uh, already a, a firewall basically uh, blocking all out uh, uh, in incoming connections from outside sources because it doesn't want random people to you know come into your router and, and change things that would that, that wouldn't be very secure so it already has this set up and that's why we set we, we do port forwarding so that we can uh, allow those incoming connections such as uh, you know us or if we give the camera information to you know our spouse or uh, one of our friends to, to check out our camera you know we can we can do that as well so what we're gonna need to do is click this button here this plus button and this is adding uh, a port forwarding setting. So it's going to ask for a description. Usually we put something like FOSCAM camera one. And if you have multiple cameras, maybe you want to set, uh, you know, one, two, three, four uh, for multiple cameras. Or you can do actually even locations. I can put like, uh, what, like basement camera. And this is a port forwarding for that camera. But I'll go ahead and just keep it. Foscan camera one doesn't really matter. It's just for your own preference. And in these fields where it says ports, UDP port, TCP port, public and private, what we're going to do is we're going to put that same port 8090 in here. 8090, 8090, 8090. And we see that in IP camera tool 8090. That's what we set it at. And the private IP address, this is what we have to change. We're going to need to change this to four and the reason we do that is obviously because the camera is set up on 10.0.1.4 and remember in the first video when I was going over this initially I stated that we need to set a static a static IP address for the camera and the reason we're doing that is because you can see now that if this number if this changes at any time if I set this to four and I push save and everything's fine you know and a couple of days go by no no problems and then what happens if maybe the, the power goes out, the camera restarts, and you know the router assigns it a different IP? What if it becomes 10.0.1.5? Well, then you're not going to be able to see the camera anymore. And a lot of people do have problems with that. So that's why we make sure that 
we set a static IP by right clicking, going to network configuration, and, and setting it here. Uh, so we know that this is going to be set on 10.0.1.4, you know, forever. So we have it set at 4. We're putting 4 over here. Everything else looks good, so that's great. So we're going to save this. And you'll see it saved it over here. Now we just need to update it. So we click update over here. And it's going to tell us that the networks will be temporarily unavailable. It will be, okay, that's fine. Continue. And it's going to update. So you'll, you'll see the status over here. It's going to update f maybe 5, 10 seconds. It'll come back up. And there we go, it just came back up. And we can click it and go to edit again. We can go to network at the top and we'll see that it did save our setting over here. So that's basically it, port forwarding is done. So now all we need to do is test it. So how we test this is we need to find out what our router's external IP address is. Now there's a difference between local IP addresses and external IP addresses and it's a basic concept that you should be familiar with if you're not. Um, Local IP addresses uh, are for devices that are connected to your router's network. So this computer right here that I'm on, it's connected to the router. The camera is connected to the router. And all of these devices start with 10.0.1 because that's what the router's IP address is. And then the last digit is different. So we have four for the camera. I think my computer is on uh, three, 10.0.1.3. And the router is always usually going to be on 10.0.1.1. So that's for local addresses. That's because this computer that I'm on right here, it's connected to wireless. It's within wireless range of this router. Um, these devices, other devices might be connected with wireless. The camera might be connected with the Ethernet cord. As long as it's directly connected to the router, it has a local IP address. An external IP address is what your router is broadcasting to the rest of the world. You know, everyone's outside network, everyone's router has uh, an external IP address that is assigned by your ISP, whether it's AT&T, Comcast, uh, you know, any of these different networks. Usually they assign you a static external IP address that, that doesn't change. Sometimes if you're on cable, you might have a dynamic IP address, and for that you're going to have to set up a, a DIN DNS uh, address, a host name, and you can, you can see our other videos on, on how to set up uh, that specific thing. But if you have a static IP address that's external, uh, go ahead and let's check it out by pushing edit. Let's go to internet over here at the top. And you'll see this address right here is different from our local IP address. It's not 10.0.1 something. This is 12.69.124.228. And this address is being broadcast to the entire world. You know, Anyone on the internet is able to uh, connect to our router if we let them, uh, which is basically what port forwarding is. It's allowing people to connect to your network uh, if they're on the internet, if they're connected to the internet. So this is our external IP address. And this is what you're going to be using if you want to view the camera from a phone, from your house, from your work. Um, uh, I'm sorry, not your house because you would be connected to your local address so you wouldn't even really need to use this. But uh, if you're on any other network that's outside your home network, you would be using this uh, internet address. So let's go ahead and copy this. And let's go to our browser over here and let's try putting this in and so we're going to put in 12.69.124.228 and if I try to push enter here it's not really going to do anything that's because I forgot the port I have to put the port at the back so I need to put colon 8090 and now if I push enter it should come up with something and that's great and it came up with the camera and you'll see that this IP address is different from, from the one we have, the, the local one, and it's still pulling up the same camera. And so that, that's basically showing you that, you know, because this IP address is external, um, it's still able to be seen. Uh, because whether you go on another network, you're still connected to the Internet, and the Internet is just this huge web of outside networks, you know, all connected at the same time together. So just to prove that you know, this is working correctly, I can actually just, uh, I can connect to a different, a different network. So if I connect to, let's say, our FOSCAM1 network, I connect to this network. Uh, this network is not going to have the same uh, IP address or local IP address or external IP address. The entire network is different. And you'll see nothing is being found in airport utility. Um, but if I use the same IP address to try to connect over here, I'm still able to pull it up. 
And that's because I'm using the external IP address. This is the IP address of my network uh, on the internet. And I'm able to get to the camera because I have assigned it a specific port. And that's for this specific camera. So this proves that, that port forwarding is working. So we're, we're set up, we're done, that's great, we're, we're finished. Um, and a few things that I did want to go over, let's go back to our main network. If you want to find out your external IP address um, by not going into your airport utility, for example, you can actually go to www.whatismyipaddress.com. You can push enter, and you can find it right here. 12.69.124.228, which is great. And that's our that's the same IP address that we use before just to get to the camera. And you can eat it'll probably tell your ISP as well if you're having problems uh, with port forwarding, and I'll get into that right now. Is you can actually also check your port uh, if it is opened. If you did your port forwarding and your port for uh, your port is open, you can check that by going to www.canyouseeme.org. And you push enter and this is an open port check tool so basically you can put in your port and it's going to tell you your external IP address here again you can put in that port that we put in 8090 8 excuse me and we can put uh, we can push the button check your port and this is telling us uh, success so we can it, the service is able to be seen on this port and your ISP is not blocking port 8090 now if I put in, let's say I put in 8091, right? If I click check your port, it's giving me an error because I didn't port forward this in my router, right? And I wasn't able to see it. Now, another thing is, if you did port forward this correctly, let's say I did 8090 correctly, right? And I click check your port, and it still says error, that might be an issue with your ISP. It might say your ISP is blocking this port. And that would have to be dealt with your ISP directly. So you might have to call them. Usually this is a problem with uh, cable providers as they use, uh, they, they block most of your ports for some reason. You might have to call them to unblock the port. So go ahead and you can give them a call and ask them, uh, you know, you're trying to set up your camera or you're trying to set up a device on your network uh, and you're trying to port forward it and the, the ports are being blocked. So you can ask them to please unblock your port just for this specific device or if you have multiple cameras for a specific range of, of ports uh, and they should be able to let you do that and they'd be happy to do that for you. Uh, so that basically con concludes the uh, port forwarding guide. If you have any other questions you can just email us at www.foscam.us. Our email is support at foscam.us uh, and you can check out the other video guides uh, for some basic features of our cameras uh, or if you need any other help you can go back to and see uh, some of the other uh, videos uh, for Mac on how to set up wireless or, or just basic setup. Uh, so go ahead and check those video, videos out uh, and we'll see you next time.